Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, this is a tradition, obviously, before the uh, pay-per-views, and and obviously, as also as tradition, with us today is uh, Executive Vice President of AEW, Cody Rhodes. So here in a minute, Cody is going to be available to discuss what to expect tonight on Dynamite on TNT, uh, the incredible matchups we have in store for Revolution on Sunday night, as well as the current state of AEW. So without further ado, let's now turn the call over to Cody for some opening thoughts, and then we're going to open your lines for questions. Cody? Hey, everybody. Uh, as usual, it's uh, been an honor for us to continue working and helping to provide a bright spot for fans in these difficult times. I, of course, am looking forward to my match tonight uh, with Shaq and Red Velvet and Jade on Dynamite. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to talking about Revolution, the second iteration of Revolution. Uh, it will be nothing short of spectacular. You have the AEW Women's World Championship, the AEW World Tag Team Championship, a uh, street fight featuring, featuring Sting. Uh, the face of the Revolution Ladder match, which I am in, big money match, Casino Tag Team Royal, uh, Battle Royale, and then, of course, the AEW World Championship contested between the champion Kenny Omega and John Moxley, exploding barbed wire death match, uh, and always. I love talking to you guys. Uh, it, it's a special uh, part of my day. I, I get very excited about this when we get to do it, so let's just dive into the questions and, and get rolling. Thank you, guys. All right, Cody, thank you very much. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call on Connor Casey from Comic Book first. And following Connor will be Stephanie Francone from Steel Chair. So, Connor, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Cody, for doing this today. Really appreciate it. Um, you, regarding Revolution, you've got this exploding barbed wire death match as your main event. Um, I, I'm just curious, how do you feel about death matches, and what do you think their current role and place in modern pro wrestling is? Well, I think with a lot of things, AEW, death matches have a, a certain identity that's already been been given to them. If you look back at, you know, FMW and exploding uh, explosion matches uh, that that happened in, in the past. If you look at what uh, Terry Funk has done, and then even uh, you know, fast forwarding to Matt Tremont uh, today uh, in this era, th those are nice parallels. But anything that involves Kenny Omega <laughs> is is going to be unique in a sense, and it's going to have its own identity. And obviously, being under the AEW umbrella I, I i'm having to speak very vaguely about it because i've only seen the barbed wire that's starting to be wrapped uh, i don't have a clue how the explosions will work um, i'm just as on the edge of my seat uh, as everybody else is about it i think to me the most important thing is the title itself and and that you know it remains uh, in proper hands, as people know who have followed the product, you know, from a creative standpoint, John Moxley a little bit screwed out of his championship, well, a lot screwed out of his championship, and what a wonderful reign he did have, uh, Kenny Omega returning to form and the cleaner kind of re-emerging on the scene. Uh, you know, no pun intended, it creates a very combustible and dangerous uh, environment. This match would be going on last even if it wasn't for the world title because it's incredibly violent. Uh, viewer, discretion, uh, viewer discretion advised on the, on a death match like this, but uh, I'm just as curious as everybody else. All right, thanks, Connor. Thanks, Cody. Okay, Stephanie Francombe is next, and we're going to follow Stephanie with Jim Barcelona from the Miami Herald. So, Steph, you're up. Hi, Cody. Hello, nice to, nice to hear from you again. Um, you hear me? I can, I can hear I, you. Okay. Um, first of all, congratulations for the, the little girl to come. Uh, uh, it's fantastic uh, news that uh, was announced on TV. Um, I want to tell you about the big sh Paul White, sorry. Uh, it was a surprise for many of us to find mm -hmm. out that he was now uh, a member of AEW. Um, can you tell me more about uh, all, of, all of things that happened? And also, do you want to have more 
would say legends, but uh, yeah, people with that experience um, like Paul can have uh, more people like that in AEW. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you uh, very much for your question. Uh, Paul White is a big, big part of my career. <laughs> As uh, some of you know, and then people who have kind of studied our industry, uh, we were involved in a WrestleMania together, and that that will always bond you in a unique way. The Paul White that AEW is getting is extremely, extremely motivated. I, I can tell you, you know, there wasn't a long negotiation process simply because he wants to be here, uh, very much so, and. He wants to be here in a different capacity as, as far as announcing and commentary goes with Elevation. Uh, I, do think, I do think there's a match, R2, R3, R4, and that's just me personally because I know uh, he's able to still go at a high level. But from a management um, standpoint, I'm most excited about him just being in our locker room and and being seen because we have so many young people who are now all of a sudden famous. Uh, nobody knew who Britt Baker, Sammy Guevara, MJF, um, you know, or Ricky Starks really were a few years ago. And now they are emerging on cable and across Warner Media. And they're, they're, our, they're, they're the future of, of wrestling. They're all very important to me. And someone like Paul, not unlike some, you know, not unlike how Sting has been. Someone like that is really good to keep people grounded, uh, to keep things in perspective. Uh, Paul White has has more to give, and uh, he's he's going to give it, and he's going to give it at AEW. So I'm very excited to see that. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, okay, next we're going to go to Jim Barcelona from the Miami Herald, and I'm going to ask Joel Torres from Contralona to be ready to go. Jim? Thank you all. Thank you, Cody. I'm curious, talking about Paul White and just what is it like, not only having him, but when you think about what he's done in his career and now you're going tonight in a tag match against Shaq, is it just coincidence that Paul just happens to be here now with that big tag match tonight? There's some history there between Paul White and Shaq. And what does it mean to have Shaq with AEW and having some people like that? You wrestled Stephen Amal as well. What does Shaq bring or give to AEW as far as mainstream appeal and just getting more eyes on the product? Well, the, the timing of everything is certainly uh, – there's a lot of kismet involved, a lot of serendipity with that. But it is coincidence. Um Paul White is entering a different phase in his career, and, and Shaq has entered into what I guess would be considered a rivalry uh, with him and Jade and, and myself and Brandy, um, who was unable to be part of this match because the greatest gift on earth, the fact that she's uh, going to have a baby, uh, and Velvet stepping up to the plate in, in such epic fashion. I, For me... Shaq's presence and what Shaq brings is is obvious. Um, he he definitely has a, a very large audience, a very a very large following. If you look at everything he's doing with Shaq Life, and you look at his world and and all of his entrepreneurial efforts, he's he's really a, a model businessman. Uh, but for me, this match, I would like to see Red Velvet really hopefully emerge the star and hopefully emerge victorious uh, of this. You know, if anything, this match has presented a big opportunity for both Red Velvet and for Jade. Uh, our women's division uh, is continuing to grow. We're continuing to cultivate it. The Eliminator tournament that's happening and to be able to, during a pandemic, uh, cross the ocean to make it happen, but it was not easy. Uh, Tony Khan moved heaven and earth to get production in Japan and he made it happen. So for me, this emboldens and bolsters our, our women's division. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything mean about about Shaq because he's entering a different world. If I was to step on the court and play horse with Shaq, 
it would it would be a joke and uh i i hope he's ready i know he i know he trained uh and he's trained uh near me but uh we'll we'll see i i don't think he's got enough gas in the tank to compete with me all right th thanks both and now uh, as promised i'm going to go to joel torres from contralona and john alba from spectrum sports you will be next joel hi cody how are you so great to meet you oh very nice to meet you too so Cody, um, talking about Red Velvet and and your match tonight against Jack and Jade Cargill, and obviously uh, Red Velvet being a Latina wrestler, um, you know you guys in AEW have have shown a lot of importance to the Latino pro wrestling. How important is for you to have a Latina wrestler like like Red Velvet by your side tonight on this match? I I think it's. Uh... It's just a, a, a beautiful thing as far as to have diversity in your in your locker room and, and diversity uh, in your in your space and to put it out there and it be excellent content. Um, some of you may know people who have studied the business. This it used to not be that way because uh, promoters were were really adamant about only having one of a particular demographic or even a minority and, and they would try to almost make that a gimmick um, to a degree and this is years and years and years ago i'm not talking about anybody currently but today uh, the best wrestlers are from all around the world you can find them in in pockets from from the north to south east to west and that to me uh is is very exciting i want to continue to cultivate i take scouting trips even during the pandemic uh and i i'm excited as the world slowly opens up and safely opens up to continue those scouting trips uh because the diversity for us is 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 paramount and we want to represent as many individuals and, and cultures and identities as we can i think the wrestling language the language of wrestling is universal Thanks, Cody. John Alba, you're going to be next, and then following John will be Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy. So, John, floor is yours. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Cody, first off, congratulations to you and Brandy on the baby. Very exciting stuff. Um, believe it or not, it has been pretty much a year that we are in the middle of this pandemic era of pro wrestling. And it really felt like AEW was on the verge of breaking through to another level with Blood and Guts coming up and the debuts of Brody Lee and Matt Hardy. And then everything shut down. So what I'd like to know is where do you think AEW was heading before the pandemic and what you were able to accomplish? And how can you pick up from that place and ensure that you spend the rest of 2021 and beyond getting back to where you guys were on track to be? Well, we were heading to the freaking moon, buddy. I, I, I honestly, uh, we were we were rolling, and you look at Prudential Center and and that sellout and what blood and gates, uh, what blood and guts was going to be. Uh, that's so wonderful. But the pandemic happened not just to wrestling. You know, it did hit the hospitality industry really hard. It did hit entertainment incredibly hard. But it, it hit everywhere really hard, and, and a lot of people have uh, faced so many hardships. I think the number is forty million unemployed and forgive me if that's hyperbole i don't think it is though um so i don't want to you know whine about about what happened to us um instead i want to i want to help those who have experienced it with us which the wrestling fan wasn't sure they were going to get wrestling on a weekly basis um you hear a lot about these fabled norcross shows that happened uh when AEW and the pandemic first hit and lockdown started to happen and the marathon, the, the march, 30-something uh, matches in, uh, in only 26 hours. Uh, it was some absurd data that, that we were able to pull it off. And those shows genuinely saved the company. That's why they have such a, a soft spot, because we are, our job is to provide content for TNT, and we have continued to do that. And they've been such a, a wonderful partner. But we had to pivot like everybody else had to pivot. And now, uh, we're, as vaccines are starting to become regular and the Johnson & Johnson one was just approved and you start to see vaccines for every, every citizen of the U.S., 
I think there is going to be a large bounce back with people who want to go out there and get get their entertainment, get it safely, and get back to, to the way things were. I really think it will only behoove AEW uh, in time because we never we never gave up. We we never flinched. Uh, signings were still happening, uh, big signings at that. Uh, and pr- progress was being made in the show. We didn't just pump out some evergreen content, say, wait, and say, we'll be right back. Um, we're, we've been here the whole time. Um, so I, I think we'll continue on that trajectory. This was good, a good challenge for us that we met it uh, head first. And I think we set the standard for how wrestling can be done in a pandemic with how Keith Mitchell and Tim Walbert shot uh, wrestling from Daly's Place and continue to shoot it. Uh, with Tony's application of the locker room and getting every independent wrestler who was out of work, basically some sort of work at AEW and making them part of our crowd, the testing protocols, uh, the temperature scans, the, the uh, fact that I can't walk from one room to another without a certain wristband on. It is uh, overkill, but it needed to be overkill, and it's it's provided a safe working environment. So. I'm I'm ready for the next the next wave of it though, and and hopefully slowly but surely Texas I heard just opened up, but we aren't going to be the first to dip our toes into that water. Um, we're we're going to do this as safely and uh, properly as we can, so that wrestling fans feel comfortable. Thanks, Cody. <clears throat> All right, so next up is going to be Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy, and then I'm going to follow with a write-in question from Kyle Masters of All Elite Podcast. So, Amy, you're up. Amy, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi, Cody. Thank you very much for taking my question. I want to touch back to Red Velvet real quick. You mentioned that she has epically stepped into this position um, to replace Brandy within this feud. You had also mentioned that you have her on a sort of special retainer contract considering that we've seen sort of a meteoric rise with her from her ring work to her promo work, um, especially in the buildup to this feud with Shaq and Jade, what's next for Red Velvet? And may we possibly see her signed full-time with AEW? I mean, um, that's a beautiful question. And to me, the answer is, is, is within, the, was it within the question. She has stepped up. We've seen her. And, um, and I would hope that it, it turns into a full-time full-time gig and a and a part of being a part of the all elite locker room full-time uh not that a tier zero or a retainer type contract isn't being part of our family uh but but tony is really um careful conservative and diligent about when you see that such and such is all elite graphic um he really wants to make sure that that's somebody in it for the long haul somebody there for the future and i think that's a big part of today um, as well, specifically Red Velvet, uh, and looking at her, and and she went from being a replacement to she's not a replacement at all. She's changed the makeup of the match. Um, so I, you know, I, I kind of want you to ask me that same question in 24 hours. Um, I think she's going to kill it, um, and I think she's going to hopefully become part of our family. You know, I don't mean I, I could be talking completely to complete nonsense in this moment because. I bet you I'm going to look at a legal uh, memo here in a second, and perhaps we already signed her, but I'm pretty sure uh, I'd like to advance things with her um, if all goes well tonight and if she's able to execute when the red light is on. Okay. I'm going to um, ask a question on behalf of Kyle Masters from All Elite Podcast, and then following that will be uh, Stephanie Chase from Digital Spy. So, Cody, the question from Kyle. The AEW Women's Tournament has been a great success so far in fan enjoyment. Most of the tournaments have been very well received in AEW since its inception. Are tournaments now becoming a staple of AEW? Will we see more in the future, especially on Dynamite slash PPVs? And will we see the American Nightmare in more than in, in more of these in the future as well? Oh, tur- tournaments are absolutely uh, part of what we do. You know, uh, initially looking at AEW, we wanted to have several portions of the show provide a sports-based outlook on our industry and a tournament so good for wrestling because uh, th- those matches in a tournament are just for the opportunity at another match. You're buying more time. Uh, you're getting more uh, water in the glass 
Um, and I was part of the TNT title tournament and to, just a, just a beautiful thing. Um, some of my favorite shows growing up were tournaments. Um, and even the two day classics, you know, the Crockett cup all the way to King of the ring, a tournament when you do it right, um, is certainly something special. And I think for sure, um, you'll see more tournaments and tournaments that, you know, right now we have one that's geared around the AEW women's world championship. Sheeta being, a such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful champion, just an absolute ace. Uh, and then you're going to see tournaments that perhaps have their own uh, peripheral uh, item that, that involves and things and things of that nature. So tournaments around the titles and tournaments around uh, bragging rights and specific things uh, that talents can acquire. But yeah, there'll be more, more tournaments for sure. I'd, I'd hope to not only see tag tournaments and single tournaments, but you know, somewhere down the line, I'd love to see a trios tournament as well. Okay, thanks, Cody. Okay, Stephanie Chase, you're going to be next, and following Stephanie will be Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone. Stephanie, you're up. Hi, Cody. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, thanks, and thanks for talking to me today. Um, I was wondering, we know how much of a fan of Sting you were growing up, so what has it meant to you personally to see him sign with AEW and for your company to be able to be the ones to give him an opportunity to have another run? Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, nobody was a, more of a little stinger than me. Um, I would go to the shows and the merchandise stands had the temp tat that you would put on your face and my mom would wet the tat and then I'd be so excited I'd usually take it off too early and have like a real NWO Bush League style uh, sting paint on my face uh, but I gosh I, I'm such a fan and I think I think sting right now that the question is can sting have a regular wrestling match you know, is can can he do that? Can he go bell to bell in a live setting? I would bet he absolutely can. Um, there, there's a lot left, and and I don't know if anyone noticed when he hit Ricky Starks with the bat, but his frenetic mo movement, his dynamic motion, is is still there, and that's dangerous as far as if you're his opponent, uh, especially because people forget Sting is a big guy. He's from a generation where. Uh, there were, there were, you know, he was more of a light heavyweight, but now he's definitely a full blown heavyweight and a little bit taller than some of our roster. Um, having him here is wonderful. I want to make sure he's happy. Um, I want to make sure he has a great place to be here. And I think he's in it for the long haul, uh, with, with AEW and our family here. Thanks Cody. Okay, Bill Pritchard, you are next. Uh, Bill Pritchard from Russell Zone, and then I'm going to follow with a write-in question from Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Ropes. Bill, you're up. Bill, you're muted. There we go. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. How are you, bud? Not too bad. Uh, so I kind of wanted to touch on this comment Shaq made in an interview. He said that he expects this match to top all other celebrity matches in the past. And Pat McAfee kind of chimed in and said, no, it won't. But I wanted your take because you already have experience in that area. You faced Stephen Amell before. Is there any added pressure just facing a non-wrestler in general is there like do you pay attention to comments like that where you you know you try to raise the bar so to speak well i i think uh you know i didn't see this particular comment especially from pat which is super bizarre because just just bizarre because i'm pretty sure pat's trying to get a job at AEW like every other day but that's another conversation um I like that Shaq made that comment. I stand by that comment myself. I'd make the same one because you have to continue to raise the bar and you can't do, there's a lot of old veteran wrestlers who have these opinions on how you're supposed to do a celebrity match. My opinion is, is, is this, you have to wrestle. If you're showing up for a wrestling match, 
you have to wrestle. It can't be, oh, they're not from our world. They shouldn't be able to lock up. None of that. Check trained. Uh, I never trained with him, but he tra- he trained for this. So I anticipate he's going to know his way around the ring to a degree. Now, he doesn't have the experience that I have for sure. But if he did train, and we're talking about a multiple-time world champion uh, in the NBA, we're talking about a former MVP, uh, that athleticism is is once in a lifetime athleticism, which is where I would be confident in saying, hopefully, it is the best celebrity match of all time. Because if he did train and he is the man we know that is Shaq, then by all means, um, uh, I, I I hope we can uh, set a new standard and and raise that bar and and not only set a new standard but perhaps give a different outlook on what a uh, celebrity or crossover type match should be. Thanks, Cody. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a question from Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Ropes, and then I'd like to ask Ed Robinson from SiriusXM to be ready. So, from Kenny McIntosh, with the story from Wrestling Observer that NXT will be moving to Tuesday nights, can you talk about the strategy you guys had have had from the start and focusing on what you guys are doing and not reacting to the other show? And how excited you are at the prospect that people might not have to choose a show anymore and have AEW as the sole destination on TV for Wednesday night. Um, yeah, I, I, I obviously anticipate this question to a degree. Um, if that's the case, if, if uh, we're no longer going to be opposed on Wednesday nights, um, I'm sure we'll come up with some sort of, you know, wonderful statement i mean what 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 could i say uh congratulations to nxt on a successful move to tuesday nights the real winners are the fans who can watch nxt and dynamite live every week as this is a marathon not a one night sprint i could say that uh but i don't want to be sassy or uh, a jerk because i i think them moving perhaps something else will end up on wednesdays and not only that AEW dark is on Tuesday. So AEW Dark would potentially be opposed. That's why we can't get into a matter of being reactionary. We just have to put out the best show. We really do. And if they want to beat us, they have to put out a better show. Um, it's honest competition. Yeah, there's digs and they're fun and they're lighthearted. Believe me, all the locker rooms tend to love each other. It's more the management that is pointed at one another. Uh, and even that, there's, you know, a friendly relationship. Tony's a different type of management person, a different type of executive. Um, I, I, I would love us to be alone on Wednesday nights, but I'm prepared for there to be something else in that slot. So we'll see. Thanks, Cody. Okay, Ed Robinson from SiriusXM, you're next. And following Ed will be Garrett Martin from Pace Magazine. Ed? Cody, happy to be on the call today. How are you? I'm good. I'm going to be honest. I broke my phone yesterday, and it was flashing green at me as I was answering a very, very good question last. So I thought I was going to lose all of you, but I did not. So um, if I do lose all of you, we got somebody in here to back me up, just so you know. So I'm good. How are you? Always good to have a backup. Good, good. While we're on the subject of other promotions, with the announcement that the NWA will uh, be relaunching later this month with a pay-per-view, and the return of its weekly show, what will this mean moving forward for the working relationship between AEW and Billy Corgan? Will this lead to more crossover down the line, more of a symbiosis between Dynamite and on power? It could. It, it absolutely could. Tony really is, uh, as he's uh, dubbed himself, the forbidden door. <laughs> uh, if you think it's not an area where we can tread into, he finds a way to tread there and uh, do it peacefully and coexist well. Um, I, I definitely think we'll see more uh, cross-promotion potentially with the NWA or with Impact or with uh, New Japan or uh, AAA or in the, the, a myriad of, uh, of companies. It takes trust and it takes time. And uh, when we bring people in, we always try to treat them better than we treat our own almost when it comes to having our guest wrestlers, our guest luminaries, our guest bookers and promoters, uh, things of that nature. Um, so I'm glad to see NWA still moving. Billy's still moving forward with the project. And uh, I, I'm sure you'll probably see a little bit of crossover, a little bit of fun crossover. All right. 
Thanks, Cody. Okay, Garrett Martin from Pace Magazine. You are next, and following Garrett will be Tim Battle from iHeartRadio. Garrett? Hi, you can you hear me? I can hear you, my friend. Oh, cool. Hey, um, I couldn't hear you. So, uh, yeah, quick question. You've got a new show coming out in a couple weeks, AEW Evolution. How is this going to be different from Dark or Dynamite? Thanks. I would I would want people to tune in for the the first AEW Elevation and uh, you know Paul White joining us on commentary, first time for him really in his career as an analyst and broadcast journalist, as Heenan used to put it. Um, I think to give you a little spoiler potentially on a AEW Elevation again, I want everyone to watch and see uh, it. it it's going to be similar to dark, but there should be more of a focus on potentially individuals, part of our roster. And Tony Schiavone is the one who is spearheading that. I think you're going to see some one-to-one -one pieces, some sit-down interviews. I think you're going to see a little bit more of a character uh, insights, not unlike you see with American Ninja Warrior or, you, or even my other show on TBS, Go Big Show, where we learn uh, a lot more, hopefully, about why these wrestlers are stepping into the ring, why these men and women are competing, what this means to them, and uh, their place in AEW. So I think that and a few other items, of course, the biggest item being Paul White, um, will separate uh, AEW Dark Elevation uh, from its uh, predecessor, AEW Dark. Thanks, Cody. Okay, <clears throat> next up is Tim Battle from iHeartRadio. And <clears throat> following Tim will be Sean Laylis from CBR. Tim? Yeah. Uh, hey, Cody. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of buzz around your match tonight. Some might say that this would be a pay-per-view type of match. Uh, do you think the match loses a little bit of edge being on Dynamite instead of the pay-per-view on Sunday? And then also, how hard was it to convince Tully to get back in the ring tonight? Well, I would say the FTR boys, uh, I don't know how much convincing they actually had to do. I Tully. Uh, he's always got that wild look in his eye um, that I wish so many uh, other people had in terms of he, he, he wants it. I don't think it was a uh, difficult conversation. Uh, I think we've got a few surprises here for Tully tonight uh, as we are very excited and, uh, and it's not lost on me what it means, him returning to the ring. Um, as far as Shaq, myself, Jade, and Red Velvet in this tag, I think it fits just great on Dynamite. Uh, we've actually talked about it on the call before, whereas the economics of the industry are are much different now. The pay-per-view and the streaming and, and everything to that nature, uh, there's a great deal of opportunity there, but the, the television money um, is your bottom line sometimes and providing the absolute best content for dynamite and not doing a really carny, let's stretch it, let's stretch it, let's stretch it, um, that wrestling has done in the past. So I'm excited that it's on Dynamite and it's live and that it's not only live and on Dynamite, but it's kicking off the show, it being the very first thing. Um, it just makes for a great show. And actually, to extrapolate a little bit on this, one discovery I think we've made, and Tony Khan uh, seems to be really keen on it, and I love that, is that our go-home to pay-per-views uh, might always end up in some way being themed. Uh, they're always going to have a heavy hitter of a match on them uh, because they shouldn't be a throwaway. A lot of rivalries and stories and angles, if you will. Uh, sometimes the wagon is already in the barn and you run a VTR and, hey, they check out the pay-per-view. But for AEW, we still want that go-home show to not only be significant but newsworthy. Uh, and, and we're learning that as we're finding our own identity. So that will be exciting moving forward. Thanks, Cody. <clears throat> Sean Laylis from CBR is next, and Sean will be followed by Cassidy Haynes from Body Slam. Sean? Hey, Cody. Congratulations on the upcoming child. It's going to be going to make you a different person. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, my son, he's 11. He became a wrestling fan because he saw you, your brother, and your dad in a Scooby-Doo movie. Um, 
with Shaquille O'Neal being on the pay-per-view this weekend, with Snoop Dogg coming on, I assume you're probably going to help Stephen and Nell promote uh, Hills when it starts up. What is AEW's stance when it comes to crossing over with non-wrestling to bring in fans who might not have watched it before or maybe bring back fans who used to watch in the past using the crossovers? Well, I love that you enjoyed that Scooby movie, and it's actually funny to me. That is the last thing uh, we worked on as a family, and I've actually never seen the movie uh, myself, but the the fact that we did the voiceover work for it with Dusty and Dustin and myself, uh, I'm glad uh, it resonated. Um, for me, I've really taken it upon myself to, I want to grow our audience, and I know we have the best bell-to-bell -bell wrestling. We have a guy like Pac here. So just a guy like Pac guarantees me that we have the best bell-to-bell -bell wrestling. But I need people to watch it. I need them, if they come for Shaq, Maybe they'll stay for somebody like Pac. I keep using him as an example just because I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, but I definitely think you will see more crossover, and you'll see crossover done in a respectful way. Like I said, Shaq trained. You mentioned Stephen Amell. Well, he also trained because that's the only way I would insist on doing anything. Um, it's it, That to me is important. You can only bring in people for when it comes to a crossover that respect your business. Snoop Dogg, nobody respects wrestling more than Snoop Dogg and has a love for it. Uh, you don't need to chase uh, Hollywood A-list and, and B-list if they're not into this. Uh, and Shaquille O'Neal is somebody who's very into wrestling uh, and knows a lot about it. You know, grew up uh, uh, watching uh, Leroy Brown and JYD, and he has a lot of opinions and things to say about them and as a fan. And again, like I said, he trains. So, yes, you will see more crossover. Uh, and my goal here is always to grow our show because I want to grow more fans. I want to make more fans happy. Um, you will see it, but it will always be done in a disciplined way. We want people who love our, our sport and love our form of entertainment because um, they make for the best guests. Thank you, Cody. <clears throat> okay, Cassidy Haynes from Body Slam, you're next. We're going to follow Cassidy with Rich Fan from Pro Wrestling Torch. Cassidy. Yes, hey, uh, thanks guys. Hey Cody, how's it going? Good buddy, how are you? Good man. Uh, so with the uh, the women's tournament finals wrapping up tonight with the winner going on to face Sheeta, you recently tweeted about uh, Maki Ito and how you like to see her win the tournament. Are, is there many talks about and possibly bringing her back into the company to work more now that uh, the tournament's wrapped up, especially after how big of a reception she got online. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Maki Ito, the deity of, uh, well, I can't say it on this call, but uh, Maki, <laughs> uh, she, she impressed, and as did many of the women in the Eliminator tournament. And I thought that was really special. I'd like to give a little shout out to Shida and uh, Emmy and Kenny, of course, and Nakazawa because like I said, Tony moved heaven and earth to make that happen. Very difficult <laughs> pandemic to get a show in another country and somehow somehow weave it into the fabric of our own show. So they did a wonderful job with this tournament. Uh, and I think a discovery from this, and we were talking about how much tournaments can benefit and function your show, is someone like that who had a following. And we want people who have a following. Um, the hardest thing to do, they say, in sports is to hit a baseball to me, the hardest thing in sports is to connect with the fans. And if you connect with the fans, that's why you will see somebody like a Maki Ito. That's why you see somebody like a Ryan Nimitz. Um, they have a connection with the fans. You don't want to be the best worker that no one's ever heard of or never connected with. Um, so, you know, personally, there's been conversations on my end. Uh, I know a lot of the women in the locker room were a fan and would love to work uh, with her. Uh, so let's, let's take a look as things open up. Um, I'd say it's pretty, pretty likely you see her again in an AEW ring. Thanks, Cody. Okay, next up is going to be Rich Fan from Pro Wrestling Torch, and then I'm going to ask a question on behalf of Jason Powell from Pro Wrestling Net. Rich? Hey, Cody. Always good to hear from you. Uh, my question is really about developing younger talent. So you've had a lot of success working with the younger talent 
and from places like WWE or other places uh, coming into AEW. You've mentioned your school that you've worked with, your brother's school's opening. But in particular, Darby, MJF have become top tier performers. And now tonight you have Jade and Red Velvet. Uh, with the tag match, what does it mean to you to not only see your status as a star grow, but also kind of being the king and queen maker behind the scenes in developing some of these younger talents, both on dark and on television? Um, man, that's a really romantic way of describing me. And um, I, I'll take it because I have heard in wrestling companies and the ones I've been in, how important it is to make new stars, and then I've seen people not make new stars. Or I've seen people not push down on the gas when the right moment occurred. And here, there's such an open mind, and Tony runs such a different business, that we are seeding. You know, you, you don't want to have a top of your roster and then nothing, 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 and then a bottom of the roster. You do have to fill out the middle of the card, the preliminary matches and then you're able to pluck from there and bring them up to the top and then they might swing back down but then they'll bring the the, the interest will be risen to the top it's a whole a whole formula and i think we're the best at doing it because we had to do it we started with a lot of unknown people or a lot of people who had like a punk rock following where everyone told you about how great they were but you'd really never heard of them or seen them so we had to do it quickly and if you look at I mentioned Britt, I mentioned Ricky Starks, MJF, Sammy Guevara, and then you can look at somebody like Anna Jay, then you look at somebody like Jade and Red Velvet. That is our job. That is our job, to make them so wanted and needed and seen that you have to have an action figure of them, that, that they have to get media requests. And to me, that's the thing. It's the most gratifying thing as a wrestler, other than you, when you win the title yourself or win a title yourself, to hear the reaction for somebody who you just made. And I know we're talking inside baseball here, and I am by no means am a, a salty old veteran, but I have been doing this since I was 15 years old. I've heard what that sounds like, and it's an absolute high that no drug on earth can give you. It's a very real thing, and I just hope we can continue to do it. And that will take not only looking at our own dressing room, our own locker room, it's going to take looking out in the world and finding people. Bill Watts was the master at finding, you know, men and women from other other walks of life, whether they're from uh, basketball, baseball, uh, gymnasts, things of that nature. You're going to have to look beyond just wrestling schools. And we do that at the Nightmare Factory. It's one of my favorite things to get a look at people. I'll tell you, one of the people we took a look at was Wardlow. Uh, and that guy's money in the bank. If he, I mean, that guy is absolute money in the bank, and he's young, and he's hungry. Um, he just borrowed my Bret Hart book. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope we can continue to make stars. Okay, I'm going to read a question from Jason Powell from Pro Wrestling Net, and we've taken the liberty of spinning the wheel for our final question. It landed on Michael Salek uh, from SE Scoops. So first we're going to go with the question from Jason get Cody's answer, and then we'll, we'll end with Michael. So from Jason Powell, the company announced that AEW Dark Elevation will be starting this month, and there's still the forthcoming TNT show in addition to Dark and Dynamite. I'm curious to know what the taping plan for all this content will be once the world gets back to normal. Can you tape all this in one night without it being overkill for the fans in attendance, or is there a plan to spread out the various tapings somehow? Well, that's a great that's a, that's a technical question and i wish i had a really good technical answer um with all the content that's moving forward uh that's an area where i'm going to leave it to greg warner who i'd like to give a special shout out to who heads production keith mitchell our executive producer tim walbert our director and their teams uh to help coordinate something that's logistically the the, the best for us uh we, we want to make sure fans have the best experience and and it's not a marathon style taping as i've been part of in the past uh, not at AEW, but i know how they feel uh, and i know where they can kind of they can i'm trying to use the right word they can linger and fatigue especially for families so we'll do everything we can uh to make it um logistically and 
and functionally correct. I'm sorry that wasn't a technical answer, um, but uh, those are the guys who I'm going to rely on to do it, Keith Mitchell and uh, Greg Werner and that team, because they're wonderful at what they do, and they have many, many years of experience doing this. And Tony will have his own plan, and we'll be off to the races. All right. Thanks, Cody. And as promised, uh, to wrap it up for us here, Michael Shalik from SE Scoops. Uh, you won the lottery. You get the last question. Michael, you ready? All right. Best for last. Here we go. Cody, thank you for your time today. Uh, following the announcement of AEW Dark Elevation, Tony Khan confirmed that a second TNT show is still in the works for later this year. Could you tell us, do you expect that this show will have a different format than Dynamite? Might we see a trios division, more outside the ring content, or something else? Well, uh, I know you're not speaking about AEW Dark Elevation. I know you mean the, the promised uh, additional hour of content uh, on TNT, actually. I think all our shows will end up with a, with a different format. Um, it's a bit of a brain trust in, in forming those formats. Right now, the focus is AW Dark Elevation, how we can make that different and how we can feature uh, our, our younger stars, our, our preliminary stars more to get to know them. I can tell you one thing we won't do with AW Dark Elevation is we're not going to bait and switch. We're not going to give you a show on night one that doesn't reflect what that show will be like the rest of the year or the rest of many years. When it comes to the additional hour of content on TNT, and I'm careful to say third hour because people sometimes think that means we're going three hours, which we are not. Um, when it comes to that, I can only tell you that it has a name, and I love its name, but I can't tell you, I can't tell you what it is, and hopefully on the next media call, uh, we'll be talking about it, but it will happen uh, in 2021. Uh, in addition to that, there's some other news uh, featuring some other AEW talent regarding another show uh, that is also in the Warner Media family. So please, uh, if you're part of our wonderful media list or if you're out there and you work with Fleischman and Mandy and all these wonderful people who set this call up for me, please keep your ear to the ground because we have made some pretty large moves and we have no, we aren't stopping. Uh, we're moving forward full speed ahead, going all in. Okay, well, Cody, thanks, thanks a lot. And to everybody who joined us, um, a lot of thanks to everybody. You know, we're about five hours away right now from Dynamite. So on behalf of Cody and Tony Khan and everybody at AEW, we, we're very grateful for your continued coverage and your interest. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up. We're going to be distributing an audio copy here shortly. So again, thanks for joining the call. Remember uh, Sunday night, uh, Revolution pay-per-view and we hope you have a great day a great week and we'll see you tonight and we'll see you on sunday night thank you